Hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Thank you once again for joining me tonight. I am still getting used to my new technology, so I am running late. Let me just make sure everything looks good. There I am. Okay, good, good. I just have to do my fun little steps so that I can see you guys and see your comments. Okay, I'm here now. Hey, Janice, thank you so much for joining. It's great to see everybody. We are having a cold week here in Ohio, and I am just ready for spring. How about you guys? Um, we had, uh, did we have snow? We've been just having overcast, not any snow. So I'm really hoping that that does not happen. I'm going to be going to a fun crop this weekend. I can't wait. I'm going to be hanging out with a bunch of Creative Memories advisors, and we're going to be learning a lot and uh, scrapping a lot and just having a great time. So I'm looking forward to a weekend with all of you that are going to be there. I can't wait. And I'm going to miss those that could not make it this weekend. There were some that wanted to go and were not able to. And um, Alisa and Sue and Nicole, I'm thinking about you guys and wishing you could be there with me. Yes, Janice. I mean, spring Every year, it just seems like it takes longer and longer for spring to get here. <laughs> um, I know that we have at least one more snow here in Ohio. We always do have a snow, and sometimes it's on Easter, and we're just going to have to do our Easter egg hunt in the snow. That's okay. We will be just fine. We'll find those eggs anyway. Um, so I know a lot of you had mentioned um, that you are enjoying my new format. So I appreciate that. I am still getting used to how to get to and use that new format. So thank you for your patience on that. I'm going to give you my announcements first, and then I'm going to switch over to the other view where my table is bigger. So um, hold on for just a minute while we get through the announcements. And then we will we'll talk about this great um, bow and envelope maker. All right. So what do I have coming up? Um, well, since I'm going to be at an advisor crop this weekend, and then my scrapbooking weekend is next weekend, and then the next couple of weeks, um, I do, I'm going to do my Wednesday night lives. I will be here for you tonight and next Wednesday, uh, but I did have to reschedule my Friday night crop. It was supposed to be this Friday. I just don't think there's going to be a way for me to do that from where we're going to be um, in a hotel. So I did reschedule it for April the 7th. So my next Friday night virtual crop is Friday, April 7th. So I hope you guys can join me that Friday. And what's going to end up happening is we're going to have two Friday night crop virtual crops in a row. So we'll have one on the 7th and then we'll have one on the following Friday, the 14th. Um, and that's okay. We can crop uh, two Fridays in a row together. I have no problem with that. Um, because I don't want to miss that second Friday of the month because that is the Creative Memories Virtual Crop Month. And we always get some great sketches and some great ideas going that Friday. So be sure and join me for that, for both of those Friday Night Virtual Crops. I know you guys will be really ready then and have all of your stuff ready. We're going to have two Fridays in a row together. So that'll be great. Um, thank you, Janice. Hey, Jean. Good to see you. All right. Um, so that's the Friday Night Crop. Tomorrow night is Scrappy Thursday with Miss Elisa. She will be on the Let's Get Scrappy With It group. She will be going live and she will be showing you uh, a layout using waves. That is our challenge for this month is to make a layout using waves. 
The one that I made on the second Thursday of the month a couple weeks ago was a simpler layout, and she's going to be doing a more complicated layout tomorrow night. So be sure and stay tuned and tune in for that because she does such beautiful layouts. You're going to want to go see what she's making. And be sure and get your layout made and posted in that group and use hashtag Scrappy Thursdays when you post so that you can be entered in the contest to win a $50 shopping spree at the end of the year. So great fun on Scrappy Thursdays. Um, my retreat is in a couple weeks. I, I really am at the very last end. So if there's any stragglers that did not contact me yet, please uh, contact me today or tomorrow, or I can probably Friday through Friday. If you contact me through Friday, I can still get you into my retreat. We are filling up and I have to provide numbers by the end of this week to the facility. So get with me fast. We have such a great time at the retreats. I, I love them. It's a four day retreat and we scrap our um, hands off. <laughs> we, we crop till we drop. Um, we have classes, we have demos, and we have lots of time to scrap with our friends. So be sure and reach out to me if you want to come to that one next weekend. March 30th is when that is for four days. Um, I, my next beginners classes are April 17th and 18th. We have such a good time in this class. And it really, it's not, it, it's not me teaching. Um, it's everybody's teaching each other. We have great conversations. We talk about different things each class. Um, we get ideas from each other and then we make a page together. So fun evening um, of scrapping on the 17th and 18th of April. And that is from uh, seven to eight. And all of these times are Eastern times. Um, so we do have a great promo going on right now where you can earn some free gifts. When you spend $75 or more, you earn free gifts and you get your choice of which gift you would like. There is a rainbow card kit. There is a template kit and there is a sticker kit. So once you spend that amount, you get to decide which of those you want. And then you earn more the more you spend. So at $75, you earn one gift. 150 you earn two. So you could get two of the rainbow card kits, or you could get one rainbow card kit and one of the template kits. It's up to you. Go out to my website and check out all of the those products. They are really cool. And card makers and scrapbookers are gonna love, are all gonna love them. Um, they are great um, products to use for card making and for your layouts. So go check those out on my website. And that is through the end of, hmm, I'm sorry, I don't remember when that ends. Let me jump over to my website. It is through the 28th. So we have till next week, that goes through next week that you can earn those gifts. So if you have been Remember how I say, save up all of those fun things on your wish list. And when there's a promo and you can earn something free, that's when you place your order. Because now you can earn some free products and you can get the products that you've been waiting on. Like if you've been waiting, waiting to get the trimmer or if you've been waiting to get one of the collections, do that now because um, this is a great time to earn something free. And then uh, that is it. Okay, so let's get down to it. We are going to talk about the bow and envelope creator. This tool sold out. It came, it was, it was um, launched last year for the very first time. And it's sold out in, I don't know how many days. Um, quickly, it sold out really quickly. Maybe uh, a week, if that. Um because it has some really cool and it's fun to use. It has some really cool features and it's fun to use. Um, but it sold out fast and it's back now. They have um, received the next shipment of this product and um, they are on sale. So if you did not get one of these last year and you missed out, grab one of these 
now. And if you do the buy it all bundle, which includes three different size papers to make envelopes with five by seven, four by six, three and a half by eight and a half, the tool and the, um, the bone, um, folder, you know, to help with your folding of paper and make it nice and crisp fold. That's what that's for. So you get all of that in the buy it all bundle for $52 and 50 cents. And so you're really close then to earning a free gift. So if you do this buy it all bundle now and um, $22 and 50 cents more, you reach that $75 uh, price point to earn a free gift. So this is um, a fun tool to have in your, in your toolbox. And I'm going to give, show you a couple um, examples of how to make an envelope and how to make a bow. Um, I haven't made a bow in a while, so we may be learning, re I may be relearning this right along with you. So, um, all right, let's do it. So I have the five by seven envelope paper pack that comes with the buy it all bundle. Okay. And I have this pretty envelope and this is what you're going to make is this pretty envelope that can be used in a layout. It can be used for sending a card. Um, I love when people do the interactive pages in their albums and they have the um, little fun things tucked down in this envelope. Could be a picture, but it could be some memorabilia from a trip or a love letter. Oh, I just thought of that one. I like that one. A love letter on one of your pages. And then you just cut a slit in your uh, page protector and have this on the outside of the page protector and this on the underneath, but so that they can, the person looking at the album can get down in the envelope or, you know, if it's a page that has a big envelope on it, maybe don't put a page protector on it. It's up to you, but um, fun for cards and for layouts. So let's make one together. Okay. So this paper, like I said, that you get in the buy it all bundle comes pre-cut for you. So these are already square pieces of paper, which is what you need to start with is a square piece. And you're going to use the measurements and yes they they you may need a magnifying glass to see these measurements um but they have every di uh different card size listed down here so that's what you look for first is what size card am i making so i am going to make a five by seven card so i'm going to look here on the line oops sorry i'm trying to get it in focus um i'm going to look on this line that says card size five by seven and that's going to tell me the paper size and it's going to tell me the punch guide. So I know that I am going to make my, um, my measurement is four and eighth for the punch guide, four and one eighth. Okay. So what we do is we first open up our guides here for making, for scoring our paper, okay? For scoring our envelope. And to score it, we're gonna use this little scoring tool that's down here in the corner. It locks in there. So when you are traveling with your envelope and bow maker, it locks right in and, um, slip out white color this time okay said I'm making a five by seven card so I need to score and punch my paper at four and an eighth so my measurement is right here and I've got this nice little ledge here to push my paper up against to keep it straight and I'm going to put my paper the corner of my paper at the eighth four and an eighth mark making sure it's up against that ledge and I'm just going to score my paper then. Oop. 
right down that scoring line. And I'm going to do it the opposite way. Then I'm going to turn it around to the opposite side. And I'm going to do the same thing. Four and an eighth. Line it up. Make sure it's up against the ledge. And I'm going to score my paper. So now we're going to take our paper and we're going to punch out the notches here in the corners and then we're going to round the edges and that's it. That's all we're going to do. So here is where your corner punches and your notch punch this little guy right here. And we are going to take this little notch that we made right here, this little corner area, and we're going to just line it up. Let me just hold this up here for you real quick. So, you can see that there's a line going down the center of this uh, round punch right here on the edge. Yep. And you've also got these two little guides sticking out there so that you know where the middle is. And you're going to just line that up right on those guides and right down the middle. And that's where you're going to punch. And you're just going to turn it and do that on all four. Gives you some nice guides there. You can use those little notches as guides to get the center right where you need it. Okay. And then, you know that corner rounder punch that you use uh, to round your pictures and round your photo mats and round your paper? Well, that's what this is here in the back of the tool is a corner punch. And so we're just going to take our envelope now and we're going to round off our corners. Now I just round them, rounded all four of these off. I just think it gives it a nice look. If you wanted to leave one or two of them pointed, you could. And then we're just going to fold it in. I just like to go and fold each side. Now, look what can happen. You can have an envelope that is this way. Or you could have an envelope that is this way. So you can do a landscape or a portrait. It's up to you. And you're just going to get some adhesive now. And you're going to um, adhere that down, here these pieces together. So we're just going to put a little bit of repositionable right along the edge. Oop. We'll get that nice and tight there. And that's where you would take your, um, your bone straightener and just run it down along the edge. Give it some nice, good creases there for my envelope. Let's do this edge as well. And there we go. Look how cute that envelope is. Wouldn't that be cute for your invitations for a party or like I said, on, on your layouts. Oh, I didn't use my repositional. I grabbed my other adhesive, but that's okay. Yes, this will work just fine. Oh, I'm not laying that down very well. There we go. And again, we can just give a nice crease here. And there we go. Two cute envelopes to send those cards out, those invitations, or to use in your layouts. All right, so that is the envelope maker. How fun is that? I'm just going to slide this little tool back in here. Snap these back in together. All right. Now let's make some bows. So decorative paper is so cute for these bows. And I'm just going to grab one 
off my shelf and we're going to make some bows. These little cuties um, are so much fun to make and I wish I had a sample, but I could not find my sample. Oh, wait a minute. It's laying right here in front of me. I found it. Here we go. Look at these cute bows. And these can be used, again, these can be used for your layouts. These can be used for invitations. These could be used for decorating. I mean, how cute would your Christmas tree look with one of these cute little bows, with these cute little bows all over it? And this one is a Christmas theme. This was from the uh, Christmas paper. So how fun is that? Um, so now I'm going to have to refresh my memory. I have not made a bow in a while, but it's so easy because just like the envelope maker, all of your instructions are right here. The hardest part for me is math. Okay. I think we've, I think we've, uh, heard that several times in several of these videos. It's the math. It's the math that's hard. All right. So as you can see, I'm holding this up. Hopefully that's clear. The bow size you can make are extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, and extra, extra large. I believe this size is the extra, extra large um, because, let's see, your paper width is going to be one and a half. Your first paper length is 10 and then five and a quarter and then three eighths. So, yes, I believe this is the extra, extra large bow. So let's make an extra small. I don't know that I've made an extra small. Let's see the difference between the smallest and the biggest. So my paper width is going to be one inch. My paper length, so it tells you here, you're going to have a paper, you're going to have three different pieces of uh, paper, um, three different cuts, let me say. You're going to have an A, a B, and a C, okay? The A is the back part of the bow. So this bow, it's this green. So this is your A, this is your B, nope, I'm saying that wrong. This is your A, this is your B, yeah, and this is your C. The A is the longest part, mm -hmm. and this it's the part that folds over, okay? So A is the part on top, B is the part that's underneath, and C is the little piece that's in the center of the bow. All right, so we're going to make extra small. A paper width is going to be one inch. I know this is very small to read. There we go one inch and our paper a needs to be six inches long our paper b needs to be three and a half inches long and our paper c is just a quarter of an inch all right so one inch so first i need a paper strip six inches by one inch and what this right away i'm thinking of is isn't this a great way to use up some of your paper scraps get in your paper scrap bin and grab some um some of these and just whip them up into bows. How cute. Um, I even saw some ladies using the bows to put in their um, children's hair for with their barrette. So very cute. Very cute bows. Okay. So paper inch is one paper width. I'm sorry. Paper width is one inch and paper length is six. So I need a one by six. All right, so here's one inch, and let's see, yeah. And then I'll need a paper one inch by three and a half. Okay, so here's here's my first cut, one inch. And now for the A, the longest piece, I need six inches. This would be a great decoration too for like a baby shower or a bridal shower. How fun. Okay, so there's my six inches. That's my first, that's my A. And then my B is, let me just make sure that says three and a half. Yes, three and a half. So I'm gonna take the same piece of paper and cut at three and a half. There we go. And then I'm gonna put this one aside because I'll need to cut that as a quarter inch for the center. But I will do that in just a second. All right. So now we're going to take A and we are going to use our notch punch for each of the corners. 
and the middle. So what I would like to do then is I just kind of fold it, give it a little pinch. So there's my center, okay? And I am just reading these directions right off the front of here. So you can see it says notch punch and it's showing the corners. So you're gonna put a notch punch and that's this one on the front. You're gonna notch each of the corners and then we're gonna notch the center as well, okay? So we're just going to lay that in here up against this ledge. I'm lining it up with the um, that line that I showed you earlier, lining up the corner of my paper with that line. And I'm gonna notch it. And I'm gonna turn it around. I'm gonna line up the edge with that line with that guideline on the front, and I'm gonna do a notch. Just gonna line that up and notch. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna notch this, and I'm gonna notch this. Making sure that it's up against that ledge. There we go. And then I'm going to notch in the center as well. Okay, so you've got a pretty small little notch. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold these in and these notches are gonna match up all together. And that gives us our bow, the top of our bow, okay? Now, this other piece of paper, and you just have to decide. So do you want the top of your bow to have this, the more solid color and the stripe in the back? Or do you want your bow to be the stripe and have the solid color in the back? It's up to you. I am going to do this way. And I'm going to just put some repositionable right there in the center. And adhere it all down. Just line it up. And there we go. There's the top of our bow. This one's a little bit too far over. If they overlap, you can always trim them off too. All right, I'm just gonna leave that as is. So let's do B now. So you see the little picture of B. It also has the notch punches on each end and in the middle. But B, I'm just gonna fold it to find the middle. And then I'm going to just put it in. I'm, I'm going to fold it again. I like to do the little folds just to give me the middle. Just going to fold it to find the middle. And then I'm going to notch that out. And then I'm going to notch the other end. And then I'm going to notch the center. And you have those two little guys that are sticking up. That helps you get the center as well because you can line those up with the edge of your paper. So you can line those up and you can see where your, scent, where your paper goes with those two little notches. And there we go. We have our cute little bow. So this is the extra small. There we go. And this is the extra large. So that is the difference in the sizes of the bows that you can make. And how cute is this for your layout? And then you're just gonna cut a little quarter inch piece. Now you may wanna do another um, color of paper, you know, just to give it a little bit of, of something different, but I'm just gonna use this now. Um, and this is, a quarter is, 
I think about right here on the, that looks awfully thick. I'm going to do right here. Okay. And then you'll just put a little adhesive in the middle on the front and on the back. And you will wrap this cute little guy right around. There we go. See, now it's been a while since I made a bow, but it was easy to remember how to do it because I have all of the instructions right here, all of the measurements right here on the tool. So you don't have to take anything additional with you when you go to a crop. You can just grab this little guy and take him with you. And I will be taking this with me this weekend to my crop. So uh, lots of fun. So envelope, you're going to use your scoring here and here with your scoring tool. That's this set of instructions. And then your bow, you're going to use this set of instructions. So there we go. I have an envelope now that I could put a little bow on. How about that? How cute is that? I love it. It's so much fun and it makes it so easy. And you know, it's not just your card that will be homemade now. Now it'll be a homemade envelope as well. So, I mean, and a bow on the front. So how awesome is that? Your friends will just love it. And I love layering them like this. I just think that's a cool look too. And I think this, something like this would be really cute to put in, um, in your hair. So lots of fun, lots of ways to be creative with this too. So thank you all so much for joining. I have enjoyed having you here. Please be sure and leave me some messages because I love to read back through them. Um, go out to my YouTube. If you missed the live, go out to my YouTube channel and subscribe and watch the video. I would appreciate that as well. All right. Well, I will be back here next week, same time, same place, and we will be doing it, but not, not the same project though. We will be working on a different project next week. So stay tuned for that next week. And I hope to see you soon. You guys have an awesome rest of your week and I will see you next Wednesday right here. Good night.